Welcome to the Pottervision Podcast, the podcast where every 14 days, myself, Lucas Kirkby, and another man, Tom Lawrenson, we talk about a chapter of a famous children's book, well, it's part of a series, and we talk about other things besides. This week we're on episode 129, and we're on the chapter doi, 32. Bloody hell, I'm in and... Uh, oh. <laughs> like that. It's chapter 32 of book 5, Out of the Fire. Tom, how are you? I'm alright. Struggling with my sciatica. Oh, oh, it's taught me a lesson this. If I ever recover, it's taught me a lesson. Warm up before you do any activity. Yeah, yeah. Or like me, just never do any activity. Those never get two op- Those are the two options you've got. Yeah. So you're either doing double activity or <clears throat> nothing. It's your decision. Is it getting a bit worse in the cold weather? I assume that makes it worse. <laughs> Don't know. Don't bloody know. There's been lots of snow this week in Germany. It's snowing again now. It keeps uh, Ge- covering everywhere white. Yeah. We were just, uh, before this podcast started, we were singing Stop the Cavalry. Hey, Mr. Churchill. Dun, 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 Which is not only my favourite Christmas song, but it's possibly one of my favourite songs full stop. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Can't you stop the cavalry? Because, Lucas, you were saying that he doesn't sound that arse as he's singing it. <laughs> yeah. Quite relaxing, isn't it? It's as if hey, he's Mr. singing Churchill. to himself in like the, the house doing jobs. <laughs> Hiya, you all right? I'm recording. But right. it's, it's, I, I think it's though he's had his like soul just destroyed and he's like just his final request. I want to be at home <laughs> for Christmas. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah, the people are like, right, look, we, we've got this guy recording a Christmas song. Um, he's a bit morose. So if you come in with your bells and whenever it gets a bit like dreary, uh, can you like ring him a bit? <laughs> Mary Bradley waits at home. She's been waiting two years now. <laughs> now, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was at home for Christmas. It is December. Yeah. Um, season's greetings. How many more podcasts before Christmas? One, two, three. There's no way of knowing. <laughs> two, I think. Two. Two. <laughs> well, if we let me do my maths, then, oh, the one after this will be on Christmas Day. Oh, <laughs> that's exciting, isn't it, children? I listen to Dad, Dad, podcast. Dad, we have no presents after I've finished listening to the podcast. I've told you. <laughs> oh, Dad. They're on the quiz. Shut up. Who's that, Craig Snow? Could be. <laughs> we've, not, we've not given Mr. Snowy a shout-out. <laughs> He's never been called Mr. Snowy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds very Christmassy, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe that's a new Roger Hargreaves character, Mr. Snowy. Oh. Yeah. Well, this today was a very exciting Christmas day because today St. Nicholas came to see all the children. Now, in Germany, um, St. Nicholas or Nikolaus yeah, is not the same as Father Christmas. They're two separate people. So, Father Christmas is Santa, and then Saint Nicholas is a, a saint who I think originally came from Turkey. Yes, you have a question, Tom? You got your hand up? Does Saint Nicholas or Nikolaus like Coca Cola? No, that's that's Weihnachtsman, Christmas man, Santa. Yeah, but he does look. He does have like a long white beard, and the guy today had like a red. He looked like Santa, but he had a bishop's hat on. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> so, and he's supposed to give all the kids a present, right? And also, you know, say that they've been good and maybe, you know, how they've been this year, right? 
So a couple of days ago, we get an email saying, right, Nicolaus is coming on Wednesday. If you could send me an email back saying how the kids have been good this year and what they can improve on. Right. So I sent an email back. I said, uh, you know, they've been working quite hard this year, uh, but sometimes they can be a bit nasty to each other. They can like insult each other and not be very nice. Right. The idea being that he, as this all-knowing person, would be like, oh, I feel that, you know, maybe you could work on your teamwork this year or something like that, right? So anyway, <laughs> so we all go into the library as a class. Right? Mm. He's there all dressed up and he does the beginning bit and he's like, right, I'm Nicolaus, I come from this, this, this. Talks to the kids, asks a few questions, right? Then... He reaches into his bag and he pulls out a printed copy of my email. And he goes, right, Mr. Kirkby says that you've not been very nice to each other this year. <gasps> oh! <laughs> and all the kids turn around did he, to me like that. Did he, did he now? <laughs> they were like, <laughs> looking at me like that. And I was like, I did, yes. <laughs> I did. Well, we'll be having a word with Mr. Kirkby once you leave, Papa Noel. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it takes a, takes a bit of the mystique out of it when he's reading a printed out email. Dobbing me in it. <laughs> also said the, uh, the biggest idiot in the class is you. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> he said you're a right ratter. I didn't. It says here, look, you can even see his email signature at the bottom. Mr. Kirkby. And who is Klaus? I'm Klaus, sir. He's put the poop emoji next to your name. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. Well. <laughs> so, yeah, Merry Christmas oh. to you all and to all a good night. <laughs> oh. You at the back of the room. Oh. Should we put a video on kids? No, we just want to do our work today, sir. I don't know why you've been like this. Oh. <laughs> Trying hard all year. This is how you prove pay us. <laughs> <laughs> well, we used to like you, sir. <laughs> Anyone, anyone listening, that wasn't just a silence. We were both just enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, you know, there is a bit of acting sometimes, don't we? We, like, pretend, don't we? We look silence. at each other and we, like, relish in the last expression that was done and we just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I always was taught doing drama is it's not about what you say, it's about the pauses. Lucy was making so. me look. Lucy's, Lucy said something funny. She said, you and Lucas were making me laugh on the podcast. She was catching up on the pod. And she said, yeah. for about 20 minutes at the beginning of the episode, O-W-L-S, yeah. we just did admin. Yeah. I was like, yeah. did he? And she was like, yeah. I was like, I don't know about that. I, can't, I don't ever remember what we talk about. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's always good to do a bit of admin. Well, thank you, Lucy. We might as well do some now. Uh, if you want to buy tickets. Hey, the Liverpool date has fallen through, unfortunately. So anyone who has bought a ticket will be uh, contacted about getting a refund. But yeah, Manchester and London are still all speed ahead. So grab your tickets. And, uh, that, yeah, Liverpool date is what, that Liverpool date is what started this. Lucas messaged me going, this uh, company at Liverpool... <clears throat> want to do like a live thing and we were like okay yeah. and then Lucas goes should we throw in some other dates while we're at it we're like, fine had that not popped up we wouldn't be doing this um, yeah and now it's fallen through yeah well I'm so we're still grateful thank you very much so for any <laughs> scousers who are planning on going to the Liverpool date I suggest you write to your MP and tell him what you think yeah or Get on a train or take the car. Come see us in Manchester. Or London, yeah. should you be so obliged. London. London. Hey, 
Martina tells me you've got a new car. Is that true? Martina and her little eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true? Well, I've got a car. I've got a Golf, an old Golf. It's 20, yeah. 20 years old. Yeah. But my sister Alice was getting a new car and she goes, you buy my old car off me. I didn't want to. But you know how sisters yeah. bull- bully you? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I've bought this car off her and I've paid market value for it. She's like, I'm doing you a favour, I'm doing you a favour. She didn't even clean it when she gave it me. <laughs> yeah. The, Bloody hell. The back, so this, the, it's white, so it's covered in dirt on the outside. Like most, yeah. I, know, I know white cars collect dirt easily, but this one, especially because it was drenched in mud and stuff, you'd think it was a brown car. Yeah. Um, yeah. But not to mention, in the inside, it's covered in dust. On the back seat, which is going to be hard to explain to the police if I ever get pulled over, it's covered in baby yeah. sick. <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Isn't that mad? It's mad, isn't it? So, yeah. I remember I once did a car share with, with some comedians. Um, I won't mention the name, but you'll know who I mean when I go... So it was with him and with um, with somebody else, right? And he was driving and he goes, right, you all right in the back, Lucas? So I went, yeah, I'm all right in the back. Right. So I sit in the back and I'm like, instead of a window in the back seat, it's covered in bin bag. It's like a bin bag's been taped over it. Yeah, some cars. Like, some, happened here? Some, some cars have windows. Some cars have bin bag. Carry on. <laughs> some have bin bag, right? And I go, what's here? And he goes, um, oh yeah, someone smashed my window in. So I went right. I look on the all around me, and I've not noticed, but the shards of glass all around me, like shattered little things of glass. I've got about three pieces in my hand of like tiny little shards of glass. So he's had his window smashed in and he doesn't even bother to <laughs> he doesn't even bother to hoover it up. And he's just taped a bin bag over the window. You'd give it a quick once over, wouldn't you, with the old Henry? He was actually when we started this podcast, he was critical, that guy. Was he? He was like, We're doing a podcast uh, where we chat about this and he was commented on the post bringing up controversies surrounding these books. It's like, well, you got to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bloody hell. Yeah, That's how he sounded. <laughs> yeah, he never spoke, but we learned over the years how to, inter- you know, how to interpret the noises. Ba, ba, ba. No, I'm all right, thanks. I'm all right. <laughs> I've already eaten. Yeah, so I've got a... Uh... Yeah, go if you need to. Go if you need to. <laughs> go if you need to. Go if you need to. No, go. Ba, ba. No, you're welcome. You are, you are welcome. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. Well, why have you got to bring that up? We're trying to start a podcast. Ba, ba. <laughs> well, it's too late now. Too late now. We've paid. Too late saying that now. We've paid Bo- Podbean for hosting. Oh, <laughs> oh Podbean. <laughs> Is that Mr. Bean? Podbean. Podbean. <laughs> Mr. Bean should have a podcast called Podbean, and it'd be hard to find. Yeah, it should. Pod, yeah. Pod, pod, pod. Podbean. Is it any good, the Potovision podcast? I feel like it wouldn't work as a podcast. <laughs> what are you listening to, Potovision podcast? Is it any good? No. <laughs> <laughs> what are they talking about this week? Ba, ba, ba. So your 20-minute commute to work just consists of the boys going, ba, ba, ba. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Mr. Bean for a bit. Uh, new car. 100, 100 uh, uh. however many episodes in, it's still Mr. Bean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. We should figure out like a little uh, pie chart of what we talk about because how much of a slither do, oh, do, you, that'd be nice. do you reckon Bean takes up? <laughs> I reckon it probably takes up a good 15 degrees on the pie chart. Oh, um, what me say to you? Yeah, so I've got this car now. I miss my old car terribly. This car, it's a bit... Um, 
Yeah, it's a bit newer than my car. It's a Renault Clio. Oh, a Renault Clio. And I've renamed Very it. Very nice. I've, I've renamed it White Lightning. Hey, that's exciting. Hey, does it still take tape? So you're going to have to throw all your old ones out. <sighs> Bluetooth MP3s. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> What's going to happen to all your old uh, cassettes? I'll sort you out. You can replace a radio with a tape player. Easy. I'll just put a, I'll put a boombox on my passenger seat. Oh, yeah. Just hold it on your shoulder while you drive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've got Scatman John on tape, yeah? Scatman John. <laughs> I love Scatman John. Uh, I bloody love Scatman John. He loves me. Right, top three songs. It's uh, Can You Stop the Cavalry, uh, Scatman John and Xanadu. Oh. Uh, Tom, are you ready for a chapter 32 rundown? No, I've got plenty more to say. We are in the time of Christmas. It's a, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I have to agree. Families getting together in some form or another. Hell, you know, your friends could be your family. You on your own is your family. A one-person family. Yeah. I respect it. I'm a one-person family sometimes when everyone abandons me. You know, so... You can't be a one-person family sometimes. <laughs> you're, either, you're either on your own or you've got a family. I am. Well, I can be a one-person family. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, you know, one-person family sometimes when my mum and dad's not around. <laughs> no, no, you still got, still got your mum and dad, even if they're not there. <laughs> if I can't, right now I'm an orphan I don't know where they are <laughs> I'm a lost child That's one of the important parts of uh, child development as a, as a baby Because as a baby when something goes away you don't, you don't have an awareness that it still exists in the world You think it's gone so I think like one of the earliest like developmental stages is that the baby realises when, I don't know, mum leaves the room, mum's not gone, she's just in the kitchen or whatever. Who's been teaching you about this? I did a course once, like a training day or something, can't remember. Who's put, exactly who's put my pot vision pal on a course? Is this part of the speed awareness course <laughs> you've had to do? <laughs> Right, we will be getting to uh, driving age, but we're going to start right at the beginning with you lot. Baby development. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, that was years ago now, that speed awareness course. That was when that bloke was... Uh, he, let, he sat there for two hours, then left halfway through, and then wouldn't didn't get, like... He had to still pay the fine and get the points. Because he couldn't sit there and do it he got so angry with what they were saying he shouldn't be driving yeah exactly if you can't sit there because he did that the, for the whole like time and he wouldn't answer a question or do any of the activities and then <laughs> very clear where they were like just be here take part and at the end we'll tick you off and say you did it you don't have you don't use your points you don't have to pay the fine and then he did the first two hours and then in the break just <laughs> he just left and they were like, all right, somebody's paying a fine and getting points. I, you know, I am always fascinated when people use the expression somebody when everyone knows who they're referring to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Somebody. It's like, it's like, I don't know. Certain someone. It's like if I went, oh, someone's got a beard and glasses. Like, I'm talking to you. You'd be like, yeah, me. Like, I don't, I don't, I really, I don't know if something's wrong with my brain. Maybe I suffered a brain injury, but it's completely lost mm. on me. Like, if we were in the car and you'd pass wind and I went, somebody's farted, like, you'd go, I farted. I have. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe it's a thing to avoid confrontation, where, like a passive aggressive thing. I don't know. Somebody's punched me in the face. I just did. I don't get it. No. Well, there's a lot of things in this world I don't understand. 
Somebody's been watching Babe Station. Yes, me. I've wasted, wasted every penny of my, <laughs> my last paycheck on it. Somebody stop me. That's the mask. That's the mask. Somebody stop me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like at some point, Jim Carrey is just going to do a sequel of all these films from the 90s. That'd be good. You know how all these films come back at some point? Dumb and Dumber 2. I think there's going to be a Mask 2. I think there's going to be Ace Ventura 3. Nah. I think there's going to be Mr. Popper's Penguins, the squeakquel. <laughs> you got me there, that's funny. <laughs> 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 no, no, he yeah. got me, finally. He said squeak cool and it made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, the irony is I've never even watched that film. <laughs> Alvin and the Chipmunks. Um, yeah, do you remember, I can't remember your first Christmas. Uh, well, what's very sad about me is that... Um, I, I don't have a lot of childhood memory, <laughs> memories. Like, I can't actually remember uh, things. Like, I know... Like, I know... <laughs> this is a bit, a bit horrible. But I know that... But when, like, whenever someone asks me what's my earliest memory, I'm like, I don't... I don't, I don't have a clue. I'd really struggle I don't to remember my earliest memory. I can that. remember things, but I can't put them in order. No. What's your earliest memory? Even like... I remember... The doctor yeah. cutting the umbilical cord and kissing me on the lips. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't have been doing that. Look like primary school. No, <laughs> uh, it was the bloody nineties. It was fine, but like, yeah, but even like, pri like primary school, I can kind of vaguely remember. Um. I remember like what the teachers looked like and what they were called, but I can't remember being it, like being there and doing anything specific. That's weird. It is, you know, it's a bit, it's a bit frightening, really. Hmm. But we all have a cross. To That's bear. unusual. Like, I ask you a light-hearted <laughs> question, and uh, you give me back something very sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I always want to be open and honest. So funny. You got any fears, Lucas? For example, creepy crawlies, the dark, uh, <laughs> witches, goblins. Oh, I've got one. I've got this uh, nightmare that um, <laughs> I'm going to get brutally murdered in front of all of my loved ones and there'll be nothing that anyone can do to stop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was snakes. Oh. <laughs> Brutally murdered snakes. <laughs> uh, well, you know, it doesn't always have to be fun, does it? I think we should do one Pot Vision podcast where we try not to be funny. Oh, well, there's a few of them. Just have it be interesting the, There's a few not funny ones, and they happen to be uninteresting as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, what we've been doing recently, uh, <laughs> you don't know this, but we've been doing recently uh, an escape room episode on the Double Vision page. And um, it's us trying to do puzzles, right? <laughs> Someone yesterday threatened to quit the Patreon if we do another one. <laughs> The, the thing is, Lucas, I didn't want to do the second one, and you went, yeah, we should. But the thing <laughs> is, Lucas has got something, I don't know what it is, a de developmental thing, where he has to finish things. <laughs> Excuse me? I like, well, it's a bit weird starting things and then not finishing them. You love it. it. You, you like, love starting things and not finishing them. I go, oh, Lucas, only one audience member's turned up to this gig. Well, we'll put it on a gig. We're doing the show. Can we not refund them? <laughs> no. Um. <Yeah. laughs> so. But then other people have said they've really enjoyed it, so it's a, it's a mixed Did they bag. say really or somewhat? They didn't say somewhat. <laughs> there was a really somewhere, definitely. <laughs> I enjoyed this, but really, it shouldn't have happened. They really enjoyed it. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, if anyone else enjoyed those episodes, let us know. 
no, but you generally do do have this uh, thing. We've been threatened. You have to do things like in an order that only makes sense to you, and you have to finish things as well. What do you mean? You always do it. I was like, oh, why don't we do an episode of a uh, double vision on just Snape? We like do loads of Snape things. And you were like, no, no, he goes, yeah. you said to me, I will only feel comfortable doing that once we have finished um, uh, the last book. I'm like, comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that was early on, I reckon. I won't, I won't mind doing a snake one. Though, <laughs> I'm a lot more easy going. Well, I think the idea was, it would, yeah, I think in my mind, because we've not done the whole books, it would be weird doing a character study on him. When we don't know the whole story. But, oh, did you want about I just Snape? Meant, I just meant an hour of impressions. Um, uh, <laughs> not that, that'd be shit. <laughs> an hour of impressions. Just Snape, no one else. Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> bah, bah, bah. That's, who the old, that's who that was, it was Snape. <laughs> Yeah. Can we stop the car? Um, but yeah, oh yeah, I'm with, for the, the, the gallery. Uh, but yeah, any people on the Patreon, the people who want to join the Patreon, uh, we're having a Patreon Christmas party, our annual Christmas party. This is the third year we've done one, where we'll meet up, we'll have a Potter-themed quiz and uh, a good old catch-up, and that's on the 20th of I've, December on a I've Wednesday. I've got a feeling I'm going to win this quiz. Yeah, you you got a good uh, somewhere. I've re- I remember writing down ideas for the quiz. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's going to be a good quiz. I've got a we good should ideas. give a prize out to the winner as like an incentive. Yeah, hundred no, no. pounds. Better than that. Oh. Right. Better than that, hundred and ten. A pounds. week holiday uh, in Fulda. For your week of the year, pick whatever, whichever week you want. Well, I guess it'll be maybe when I get a week off, I'll spend it entertaining somebody, shall I? What about a week in Stockholm? Oh, no, no, in your new car, driving around in a Renault Clio. <laughs> no, the listeners don't want that. The week in Stockport, UK, boo, Germany, way. <laughs> Let all hey. the acquaintance be forgotten. Hello, be thy name. That's not it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's an angel, a New Year's angel. <laughs> right. Yeah, sorry, yeah. And so all you need to do is be a patron on any tier and you can join us for our Christmas party on the 20th of December. And also this year, last two years we did Christmas cards. But this year we're going to do Christmas messages. So if anyone wants a a lovely festive message from the two of us, um, you just have to join the Patreon, request a message, and uh, we'll record you a nice little Christmas message. Give us some information about yourself. Don't just give us your name. Or if you want it to to, uh, be for someone else, let's say you're a Patreon member, but you're like, oh, I want this... uh, Yeah. Yeah. For my nana. Yeah, for, say, I yeah. love you for my nana. But don't seduce her. She's still mourning. <laughs> <laughs> no promises. Ah. No promises from the Pot Vision boys. Shin up, babe. <laughs> Parting <laughs> at someone's nana. Chin up, babe. <laughs> <laughs> we will do that for you. That's the offer, the Christmas offer. Yeah, forget Black Friday. We can say chin up to your grieving nana. Chin up, babe. <laughs> for as little as four pound fifty. <laughs> Think of something else. Chin up for Christmas, grandson. Just give me power of eternity. But not eternity. <laughs> <laughs> the power of eternity. <laughs> Bloody hell, Thanos. <laughs> power of eternity, maybe. 
I was thinking maybe a book, <laughs> some chocolates. No, power of eternity for me. No, the man. power of eternity. <laughs> oh, my God. I'll see what I can do, love, but I don't know if Argos have got that. Well, then, you'll have to draw, withdraw some premium bonds, won't you? <laughs> so some of those shares Grand had invested in. Oh, I'll try. Oh. Yeah, so... Chin up, babe. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that could be on, on our impression repertoire. So Nana looking in the purse, you know? Because oh. they've always got them... Purse clasps that do that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> the two balls that go around each other. <laughs> oh. Sorry, love, but there's nothing in there. Look harder. Card reader. <laughs> oh. Have fun. So, yeah, that's the offer if you'd like a lovely Christmas message <laughs> from both of us. Uh, yes, so, chapter 32, Out of the Fire. Harry's been on the floor shouting and screaming, and he's seen Sirius being tortured in a dream. So he talks to Ron and Hermione, and he's like, look, this is what's happening. There's a back and forth, they're arguing, should you go help him, should you not? Hermione says, you need to check in the fire if Sirius is there, and if he's not, then we'll rescue him from certain death. So they develop a plan where they're going to distract Umbridge with some garroting gas. And uh, Harry's going to go in there in the office and try to talk to Sirius in Grimmauld Place. So all is going well. He sticks his head in the fire. Sirius mm -hmm. is not there. Creature is there. And he's like, Sirius has gone out. He's like, all right, bloody hell. Just then, Harry's hair is ripped out of his skull by none other than Professor Umbridge. She yanks him out of the fire. She's like, right, you little shit. What's going on here? She tries to get Snape to give him Verity Serum, but Snape doesn't respond. So she considers using the Cruciatus Curse on Harry. At this point, Hermione pretends to cry and tricks Umbridge in thinking that the whole secret is that Dumbledore has a weapon in the Forbidden Forest. And that she's going to lead them to it. So Umbridge follows mm. Harry and Hermione on her own, because she's daft, into the forest. And that was out of the fire. What a chapter. What a chapter. Woo -hoo -hoo. <sighs> what a chapter. Uh, Harry was on the floor, crying and screaming. And then he's trying to convince... Professor Tofty, this examine oh. vigilator, that he's fine. And I think when you have an episode like that, you you just got you just got to admit, look, that I've just screamed my head off yeah. the floor. Shouting I was and screaming. I was thinking about this right. because Professor Tofty's like, "You need to go have a lie down, son." And Harry nods his head like a lunatic, going, "Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Three bags full, sir." Yeah. And it made me think how yeah. deceitful <laughs> children are. Um, because if I was a teacher, yeah. you'd be like, he's, he's just admitted he's fine for five minutes. Now he's nodding enthusiastically, telling me yeah. exactly what I want to hear. Play it a bit more. To, sorry to rob the author's word. Coolly, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? You've mentioned it a lot. I feel like this coolly is coming in more and more. I feel like it was like three or four times in this chapter that somebody said something. Snape looked at her coolly. She looked back coolly. <laughs> yeah, the word coolly is sponsoring you. <laughs> Why is it so often in the damn book? So Harry goes off into the uh, hospital wing to speak to... McGonagall. And it says here, this is a direct quote, Pomfrey was spooning blue liquid into Montague's mouth. It's fine. <laughs> it sounds wrong, doesn't it? Uh, I'm just spooning blue liquid into Montague's excuse mouth. Excuse me, Pomfrey. Well, 
Just say you're giving him his medicine. Why do you have to and say And also, it like that? don't mention Montague's mouth. Don't even say his surname. Is that, is that his surname? Montague, is yeah. that his first name? Must be his surname, yeah. Same as uh, Romeo. Montague's, Montague's mouth. Also, it's a very vulnerable... Yeah. Well, I'm just... It's a very vulnerable thing yeah. to mention another person's features. Like, if I was sat with Martino, yeah. I was like, look at Lucas's lips. <laughs> it feels very... You'd be like, oh, maybe don't yeah. look at my lips. And I was like, look at... <clears throat> look at his... Look at his teeth and tongue. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't yeah. he a specimen? <laughs> Hello, Harry. I'm just shoving a swab into Capulet's nose. Excuse me. It's patient confidentiality. Get yourself a curtain. Yeah, there's never a curtain, isn't there, in the hospital wing? They're all, they're all just exposed in a row mm. of beds. Right, come on, trousers down. What, there's six other people in this room. Can you not like I'm ready. bring in a screen? <laughs> I'm ready for my rectoral exam, Mrs. Madame Pomfrey. I don't offer that. I do not offer that. <laughs> oh. That's very suppository of you. <laughs> oh, I didn't, didn't like that. <laughs> I made him cross, listeners. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey. I think, now this is actually, I'm going to criticise Stephen Fry, but the, I mean it as a compliment. I'm going to criticise you, but I mean this as a compliment. You're one of the ugliest C-words I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> no, he, he, miss, he miss says a word, he misspeaks. He calls it St Mungalos instead no, of St Mungos. Yeah. Why, but, why didn't I hear that? I don't know, but I, I, I rewound it back and heard it twice to make sure. But that is a credit to him because I think that's the first time he's actually fluffed a line in five books, and I think that's very impressive. Mm. But I uh, well, I'll listen back to it all just in case oh, I've missed one. Hermione, he has to uh, push his case forward to Hermione and Ron. Yeah. That yeah. Sirius Black is in danger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Hermione accuses him of playing the hero. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think she's right. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a uh, it's, it's a point to raise, isn't it? But it's, the thing is, Sirius, it maybe not in this particular scenario, because it might have mm -hmm. been different in the Goblet of Fire challenge but in this scenario this is his only family member yeah about to be murdered right so that's like well you know he, in his eyes his only family member so it's a bit more serious than that isn't it yeah like, oh it is yeah if hermione was about to say my pet i've just had a dream where my parents are being murdered at their house i think harry would take it a bit more seriously yeah well we know that my dreams actually see into real life I've just had a dream that my parents have been murdered. Do you think we should go and check they're all right? <laughs> Always playing the hero, aren't you? <laughs> me, me, me. There's a great bit, though, where uh, yeah. he says to Ron, he goes to Hermione, oh, you didn't care, you didn't, you didn't mind me playing the hero when I was saving you from the Dementors, did you? And then he looks at Ron and he goes, or oh, saving you, your sister from the Basilisk. And Ron goes, I didn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Don't remain <remember> this. <laughs> yeah. Should I have killed, let your sister die instead? Well, no, I'm going to marry her instead. Those aren't the two only options. <laughs> Look, I'm not even in this. Look, I'm going to marry her so much that she'll wish she was dead. What? I'm not even part of this conversation. What are you on about? Yeah, why does he turn around on Ron? There's no need to do that, is there? Hmm. <laughs> he doesn't know. Man don't know. Man shrug. And Harry is extremely rude. <clears throat> Luna and Ginny come in and they're like offering to help. And he, he says he swears that Luna Lovegood. It's like, she's the most passive 
human being in the world. Why are you, why are you being foul towards her? Harry, can I help? Fuck you. <laughs> I think I've just seen another <laughs> nagger. Will you shut your trap? Oh. Fuck off. Yeah? Cut. Yeah? <laughs> that clear enough for you? Put that in the quibbler. <laughs> hey, and Ginny is very... I think we've finally seen Ginny come out of her shell a bit. She's very proactive. She's coming up with ideas how she can distract Umbridge, garroting gas and all that good stuff. Mm. But do you know what annoyed me? All this situation could be avoided if those stubborn, wizarding bastards would just bring in a bit of muggle technology. Mobile phone. Text. Serious, uh, you know, year round, what's going on? Ring Dumbledore. Do you know what I mean, or do you not know what I mean? No, I appreciate it. It's a uh, bit of sentiment that's been brought up on the podcast before. But I do fear it would ruin the charm of the series. You know, if everything was like mobile phone based, we wouldn't have the need for owls, would we? And that's like. No. Uh, a big part of the magic of the series, so I have to disagree with you there. And I suppose if the other direct means of contact, it it wouldn't lead to this climax we're about to have at the Ministry of Magic, would it? Thank you so much for that well reasoned response. I really, I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. But it turns out he gets his head in the fire, creatures there, and it turns out that Sirius isn't there. So, what a huge waste of time that's all been. And then... Creature, sa- creature, creature says he's at the Ministry, doesn't he? Yes. Which is where he is, yeah. Is he? Why? Because he's at, he's at the Department of Mysteries. And Dumbledore wants the, uh, the prophecy thing, doesn't he? And he's torturing him. Oh, right. Dumbledore yeah. wants it. Oh, Voldemort, I mean. Well, maybe Dumbledore wants it as well to protect it, but I didn't mean I did mean Voldemort. Dumbledore, Voldemort. I thought it was. I thought he didn't have him, and it's a trap. Maybe he doesn't, but that's what he thinks anyway. But he, he ends up there, doesn't he? I don't know. He almost, yeah, he comes in later on to the fight. Oh, I don't know. I'm not ready ever. You're meant to be the voice of reason on this pod. You're like, oh, Tom's so lazy. Tom done. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, he's actually there. Voldemort's got him and he's torturing him. What? No, I don't know. Well, that's what Harry thinks, isn't it? I haven't read this book once as a kid. I'm reading it now together, aren't we? <laughs> We're discovering it as, uh, as we go along. Do you know what people do to me all the time? People always call our podcast Pottermore to me. Oh, well, it's more famous, isn't it? They go, oh, yeah, I listen to Pottermore. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. How can you listen to a website? I'm blind, and I, that's how my computer works. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to be rude. <laughs> yeah. well, we, we never call it Pottervision. When someone's like... Um, even the show will ah, oh, do you want to come see a Harry Potter show? Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's the Harry Potter show. We always call it the Potter Vision Podcast. Oh yeah, that's true. Potter Vision Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> la, 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 what do you call la, 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 it? Email in if you have little nicknames for our podcast. Oh, I was reading one of the reviews last night on Apple, and I think you've read it out, but it made me laugh. Where some lads like, "Hi, came to see the show in Southampton." Um, love the podcast. I uh, was Tom's got yeah. doppelganger. The other guy's funny too. <laughs> <laughs> that other bloke. I'm the other guy. <laughs> it's Tom Lawrenson and me, the other one. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a reminder if anyone wants to uh, send us a review, if you've not already, go on. The Pottervision podcast on our iTunes and uh, give us a nice review if you'd like to. We'll read it out on the show. 
Yeah, we'll read it out on the show and it might make us laugh, it might make us feel nice. We've not said Unless this yet. It's a bad review and then we'll feel bad. But the best review will get a week kend away, all expenses paid trip to Fulda. Oh, that's lovely. <laughs> So there's two prizes on offer. That's two weeks I'm going to give up. <laughs> the holidays. And and this is any time you want, and you get to shadow a teacher in school. Oh, well, that word was shadow. Yeah, good. <laughs> That's where I was going. This is a one-time offer, and you get to shadow a teacher in school. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, Kirkby, who's this uh, visitor you have with you? Look, this was the better of two options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just ignore this person here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get to <laughs> shadow. <laughs> Oh yeah! Listen, all so, I want, all I want for Christmas is the power of eternity. That's all I want. Can I have that number? Ooh, I'll have to see. It's been tight this year. <laughs> well, you should turn the eating off once in a while, shouldn't you? <laughs> Put a jumper on instead. Go sit in the library. That's open all day. Nana's doing that so you can have the power of eternity. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind, do you, librarian? No, we don't mind. You sit there. <laughs> We're getting my grandson the power of eternity. <laughs> oh, my grandson wants that too. Well, only one of them can have it. It's the sequel to Jingle All The Way. Two nanas battling it out to get the final power of eternity for their grandson. <laughs> hey, that'd be good. So, Harry pulls his face out the fire. Oh, yeah. Umbridge slaps him on the arse. She goes, Oi, oi, behind you. He goes, <laughs> Funny, uncomfortable, because he thinks, mm, She's a teacher. But I yeah. don't feel right. That's <laughs> weird. Why did I say that? Um, <laughs> she says, I've been shadowing you while you've been talking to somebody in the fire. <laughs> and I don't like what I've experienced. <laughs> and he's, she goes, Have you been talking to? It's so funny how wild I guess is are. Dumbledore, come on, you can tell me. Uh, the Weird Sisters. Ollivander. <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on, he's been talking to Joe Pasquale. <laughs> Mandela. Come on, just tell me. Tell me. Don't make me guess. I look stupid. Man and Deck. Come on. Come on. Just out. Just Deck. Both. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I won't say. Snape, Snape, get truth serum, please. He comes in. And she goes, yeah, yeah, make some more. Oh, I can make some more, coolly. But it took a month. And she goes, I ain't got a month. And he goes, oh, I'll bite him with a snake, might kill him. And she's like, oh, leave. And then Harry goes, they've got Padfoot in the place where it's hidden. And Snape goes, we're talking about talking shit to me. <laughs> well, I don't think like it's a very uh, cryptic clue, is it? I think like loads of people knew that Sirius Black's nickname was <laughs> was Padfoot. Uh, Snape, Birius Slack is in the Department of Distories. My bad's best bend band Balsbo by Bodfather. <laughs> Is being butchered by Voldemort. Well, who's Voldemort? Oh, I knew that last one. That last one was definitely Voldemort. <laughs> butchered? I don't know that, so. Birius Black. Well, Black. Draco. Black's already starting with a B. Draco, Crabgore, Clinton, can you help? 
That's funny. He goes as well. And crap. Uh, loosen your headlock on. Who is it? Uh, long bottom. Crab is with Neville. He goes, loosen your headlock on long bottom if you ever want a character reference from me. What? <laughs> if I see it, I will have to report it. <laughs> but only when you're looking for a job. <laughs> That's mad, isn't it? Like someone's like, it? someone's got someone in a headlock. Well, if you murder him, I cannot give you a good reference. Says here, in year ten, you got a boy in a headlock. I did. Yeah, boys will be boys, won't they? You've got the job. <laughs> yeah, it says here you want to give somebody a Chinese burn. Why is that on your CV? Must it be important? It isn't. Welcome to the company. <laughs> oh, and also, uh, it's just struck 12 while I've got your hand. Should old acquaintance be forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> New Year's Eve job interview. Yes, I'm sorry it is an awkward time. Uh, yeah, it's 11.57. Um <laughs> On December 31st. Yeah, but we're looking for somebody in the new year. I uh, hope, hope you're ready to start straight away in about three minutes. Well, can I just say, um, oh, I've loved meeting you today, but uh, we've decided to go with another candidate that's a lot more qualified. But while I've got you, should old acquaintance be <laughs> To me, right, I think there's plenty of listeners who are like, that's not funny. But to me, <laughs> if that it's the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> what are you doing here? Oh, I th- thought you'd hired me. You shut me hand. No, no, that was old Lang Syne. <laughs> I never said you had the job. Also, about 40 people watched the video of this, and the other thousand and a half listened to it exclusively. So that might have been lost on a lot of you, but we were acting out handshakes. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, some people must be very clueless just listening. Well, yeah, these are all free on YouTube video versions where you can see us scratch our head and sometimes do actions. There's not many podcasts where it's just two people talking, is it? A lot of them have guests. <laughs> Well, I think there's a lot of podcasts that are two people talking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of time it's a... There's not many podcasts where it's a couple of people talking. No, they've always got a guest, or it's like one of them is a guest and the other one has the podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, we've had Lewis Shaw a couple of times and once David Stanier. David Stanier. We had a man on a Patreon who auditioned for Harry Potter... Joe and Rory have been Hey, on. and last but by far no means least, Oliver. Hey, Oliver Bing. Hey. Yeah. So, yeah, maybe we should get some more guests on. I'm going to put Oliver Bing in my will. Yeah, I think you should. I'm putting him on my CV. <laughs> Podcasted alongside Oliver Bing. Oh. Uh, podcast is sad Oliver Ping that's very impressive uh, may I should old acquaintance be... <laughs> well when I first read about the uh, birthday beats you handed out I was a bit sceptical but podcasted with Oliver Bing uh, you're hired <laughs> birthday what birthday beats oh, do you right. have that at your school yeah yeah yeah, yeah. if it was your birthday you get punched for as many year, times as you were old. Mm, mm. And it used to also be pinch punch first of the month. I don't know if you had that at your school. But it was like the 1st of February, somebody going, pinch punch first of the month. It's like, for God's sake. April Fool's was doubly tragic. No, we had, w- a pinch punch first of the month and then a trick. We had cuddle and piss when you... No, cuddle and kiss when you have a piss. <laughs> What is that? Hey, 
yeah, yeah, we had pinch punch for love. Yeah, we had cuddle and kiss when you're having a piss. <laughs> so I was having a piss, she got behind her arms round. And they'd lean back into it and just go, hmm. ah, it's a delight for the senses. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we used to give each other birthday beats, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we used to have slap and a hit when you were having a shit. What? <laughs> Bloody hell, is that? How's it come out? <laughs> was it? Yeah, maybe because you get scared. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we used to give each other a little punch on the first of the month. I used to get beat up in the middle of the month too. <laughs> Uh, that sounds like bullying. <laughs> you never had cuddling kiss when you're having a piss? We used to attack me in the toilet. You, you never sorry. had cuddling kiss when you're having a piss? I've never had cuddling kiss while I'm having a piss. Mm, how's that bullying? It's nice. Mm. Yeah, cuddling kiss, yeah. <laughs> Is that a genuine thing? Of course not, you lunatic. <laughs> All right. Has, what? I believed you. I am quite gullible, me. But anything can happen in Blackpool. Blackpool. Wales, more like. Wales, more like. You come from a. What's that? Put, put a man inside a scarecrow and set him alight. That's your neighbourhood, that is. Uh, well, they did have the Welsh knot. Have I ever talked to you about the Welsh knot? No, what's that? So in Victorian times, they wanted to they wanted to kill off the Welsh language, right? So in Wales, there was a rule called the Welsh Knot, and if you were caught speaking Welsh, you had to hang a piece of rope around your neck with a slate hanging on it, really heavy, and on it it would say Welsh Knot, and you'd have to wear it for the whole day, and it would like hurt your neck as a punishment for speaking Welsh. Sorry about that. Right, wiping a tear back in the uh, yeah, back in Victorian times, was that <laughs> you wiping back... a tear then? Yeah, it's all right, <laughs> no, oh, my dear beloved ancestors. Uh, you're barely Welsh, you got all English blood in you, barrowing furnace, half scouser. Mm. You make me sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is true that three out of four of my uh, grandparents are, are English. Mm. Well, yeah. but I was born and bred in Wales. I I am of the uh, philosophy that wherever you believe is your home is your home. All right, I'm uh, I'm from Tajikistan. Well, you're not from Tajikistan, are you? You've never lived there. You've never oh. been. You can't name me three facts about Tajikistan. All right, it's. Uh, uh, it's very. Uh, some people there eat chips. That's not a fact. Um, That's not a fact. It is. It's not, and it's not a fact that be well, co- that can be like clarified. It is. Some people in Tajikistan definitely eat chips. If you were fucking doing a quiz, right, look, right and it said which of these countries yeah. ending in "stan" eat chips. And you, Tajikistan is one of the <laughs> options. Do you think that would be a good quiz? All right. Well, well, I'll tell you what. Forget three. I can name you seven interesting facts about Tajikistan. Have you just Googled it? No. It's you just Googled it. It's the most inspiring high-altitude scenery in the world. That's not a fact. I can see it reflected on your glasses. Oh. <laughs> Hey, it was at the heart of the Silk Road. Here we go. It's home to the world's longest glacier outside the polar regions. Called the Fedchenko Glacier. Can a podcast go by without you mentioning the Fedchenko Glacier? I am sick of it. (laughs) Hey, wait about Dushanbe. That's the capital city and it's named after Monday in Persian. That's quite interesting. Uh, one of these facts is about the future. It will be home to the world's highest dam. No, it won't. <laughs> hey, it'll be expected to be ready in 2028. Fine, if you love Tajikistan so much, you have to go live there. <laughs> well, 
These are seven facts. The sixth fact is you can catch some fascinating local sports. That's not a fact. <laughs> Better than your... F- hey, Buzz Cashy, we, we learned about that. Do you oh. remember? When we were doing these, uh, the Quidditch Through the Ages on Patreon, we were learning about weird games and we learned about Buzz Cashy. No, we didn't. <laughs> we did. And the final fact about Tajikistan is it's highly susceptible to... What do you think? Flooding. Flooding! Oh, flooding. No, earthquakes. But maybe flooding as a result. (laughs) Highly susceptible to pudding. They cannot resist You chips and pudding. You think the people of Tajikistan... Eat, 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 and eat. They do. They put the eat in Tajikistan. This has been the Potter Vision Podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I've got anything more to say. But, well, just at the end, the idea that I feel like Umbridge is very easily tricked. Do you not think by yeah. Hermione? Like, I think whatever, the whole crying bit and the bit about the weapon is like, okay, that's believable, because she doesn't want Harry to be tortured. But this whole bit about, <laughs> oh, only you can come with us to see it. We don't want any other people there. You alone, without any help. I feel like that bit, she was a little bit, uh, a little bit gullible with that. What do you think? Yeah, but I think she was just... She be- she believed Hermione's Hermione. God, what an annoying name! I've been down south. Hermione, I've been no. Down south recently. Been listening to posh southerners, and it's funny. I grew yeah. up thinking I was posh, but the posh thing about me was mm. that I had a set of clothes outside of my school uniform. So I wore my school uniform all week, and on the weekend I'd put on a t-shirt yeah. and a different pair of jeans. Right? And I thought, wow, I'm posh. Yeah. When you go to London, yeah. you realise these people who have millions and millions and millions of pounds and their families have always been rich. And they hate you for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so sometimes when you yeah. listen to these names they have Hermione! 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 Social yeah. media, uh, social media, Nella Rose is at this part of the social media generation. Is that how you talk? You don't sound nice, you don't yeah. sound nice. Sounds rotten. Sounds mm. evil. What are you planning? What are you hiding in there? Release them. Set them free. <laughs> <They're burnt. laughs> Just the idea of meeting somebody for the first time. And then going, hello, and you go, oh, that does not sound nice. <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Mm. Is there another one? A- anyone else? Mm. God, those posh bastards. Mm. You're the one who wouldn't accept him for who he was. Mm. 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 I'll have a think about that rant I just did. But I think, uh, hopefully, that answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit of self-reflection is uh, always a good thing. Now, Tom, I did warn you, there's been an uprising. At least ten people have asked for the return okay. of the quiz. Sure. Have you got one? <laughs> All right, here we go. Name me seven interesting <laughs> facts about... Where was it? Tajikistan. Tajikistan. Name me seven interesting facts about Tajikistan. I'm going to try without looking again at the page. So well, the don't, well, that, well is, you shouldn't... That, well, if you're cheating, you've lost. Yeah, yeah, I'm not looking again now. I'm going to try and remember from before. Have you closed, have you closed the page? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at you now. Listen, it makes me think she's still got the page open. <laughs> well, I can cr- I can cross it down if you want me to, but I'm not looking at. It, I'm looking at you. There we go. It's crossed now. All right, right. The first one of the facts were that you could 
What's local sports? That was one of the facts. The second yes. fact was that it will have the world's largest <laughs> dam in 2028. Correct, sir. The third fact is that its capital is named after Monday. Which is? Oh, God. It's the Persian word for Monday. I think it's Dushambi. It is Dushambi. It's Dushambi. <laughs> the other one, it, um, it has the world... Apart from in the polar regions, it has the world's longest glacier. How many is that yeah, for? Sure. for uh, I hope people are playing along at home. <laughs> Oh, what were the others? There were three more. Um, there was another one that was like a non-fact. Um, <laughs> and that was... Oh, it used to be the centre of the Silk Road, which is a very mm. famous trading route. So that's five, and then I think I'm going to struggle with the rest. Uh, for the sake of entertainment, I won't let myself... Think in silence for two minutes because <laughs> I probably won't remember anymore. But I'll. You normally do, you mad bastard. That's one of the biggest things of that um, escape room we were doing. I'm, I'm going to Lucas. Maybe edit out the silences. He goes, no, 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 no. Keep them in. I go. Mm, you sure? Well, in my head, I thought people would want to play along at the same time. Someone did comment saying they tried it as well. Escape room. But all right, I can't think of any more. I could only give you five facts about Tajikistan. Number six, susceptible to flooding. Oh, no, earthquakes. It's earthquakes. Susceptible to earthquakes. I can't remember what the, what the other one was. Unfortunately, Mr. Kirkby, you have lost the Potter Vision quiz. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, high altitude scenery. Never mind. Yes, obviously. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. And now it's time for the nation's back to second favourite segment. It's Hedwig's Drubbings. We're not alluding to owl poo. We're not alluding to plopping. <sighs> we mean the message you send in when you allude to Hedwig's Droppings. What's in a beak this week? Well, today, we not today, yesterday, we had a lovely message uh, from somebody called Lita. Or Letta, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Now, Lita says, I absolutely love your podcast, which is helping me a lot to get through an important exam. It's a bit like GCSEs, but in France, because I use your podcast to revise. Keep up what you are doing and keep being you, please. P.S. Can we bring back the quiz and the rundown interruptions? <laughs> it's been a while since we've had them. He likes that. He don't like the quiz coming back. <laughs> the rundown interruptions. Uh, so yeah, maybe next week we'll have uh, we'll have some more rundown interruptions. Yeah, so thank you very much, Lita, and uh, bon chance uh, with your exams. We'll have to do a, um, we'll have to do a, we'll have to do a poll on the Instagram story. What do you want to the return? You can have one: the rundown interruptions or the quiz. <laughs> yeah, I'm up for that. I will. I will respect the, <laughs> or, uh, the verdict or, of said poll. Or Tom's Riddle. Oh, or Tom's Riddle. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be good. Yeah, so thank you so much for your email. Now, as always, we have a few patrons to welcome to the fold. And the first one today is a baby Harry, and it's Isin Altin Kaya. <laughs> oh, me. Isin yes, you know. Altin Kaya. You are a baby who has been forbidden from speaking your native tongue, Welsh. They have tied some a knot around your neck and have paraded you through the village. I am a British bystander. What British have one is. I am an English <laughs> bystander, a Victorian, watching this whole thing unfold. And in um un, unfold, I say. Is it right a baby should have to wear the knot? Someone slaps me. I grab their hand and squeeze it so tight. Unbelievably tight. It goes purple. They start shrieking. Their hand falls off, falls to the floor and starts... Um, I don't know. It dies. Oh. Everyone runs away. 
all that's left is me and you. I take the knot from your neck, hold you up, and... There we go. So welcome, Issy. We also have another baby, Harry. So please welcome Amy Watts. Amy Watts. Hmm... You are at a casino walking round, a baby with money. You go to the blackjack table. <laughs> they refuse you service. No babies. Then you go over to the slot machines. No babies. I'm seeing this whole thing unfold. I work there. Yeah. I work on the roulette table. I say, baby, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> baby. Baby. You're ignoring me a bit. Like, oh, God, that's not... Yeah, nice. yeah. Some, some off. But I continue. Baby. Baby. You get returned from... You get refused from five other tables. You think, fine. You come over to my table. You say, all on red. A million pounds you put forward. I go, all on red. Million pound. Throw the ball in. I <laughs> What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they say it like that. All on red, million pounds. <laughs> I spin the roulette table. <laughs> Everyone's watching. Whoa, 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 whoa. You fall in. Oh, now baby is rolling round the roulette table. The roulette ball, uh, you swallow it. <laughs> I think, oh. I'm losing my job. I've made this whole thing <laughs> happen, right? I think, what to do, 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 what to do. I see another baby. Throw them in. <laughs> <laughs> Double or nothing. Double or nothing. <laughs> this second baby hits you, dislodges the ball, and uh, the roulette table starts slowing down. The ball lands on red. You're a winner. Two million pound coming your way. I hold you up. Mwah, 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 mwah. They say to me, you're going to have to leave. I said, is it because I kissed the baby? They said, no, because <laughs> everything else. I was like, fine. <laughs> All right. All right. So the next, uh, <laughs> the next baby is Katrina Thwaite, who is a baby Harry. Katrina Thwaite. You are at the cinema watching West Side Story. Maria, Maria, <laughs> Katrina, ba 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 ba. Where the jets? Where the jets? You're the snakes. You're the snakes. I'm a wolf. I'm a wolf. Oh, that's me watching the film. <laughs> <laughs> You're with your parents, and they've fallen asleep. A bit of a boozy afternoon, right? You've continued watching the film, eating popcorn. You've run out of popcorn. So you go for exploring along the floors. What else you can eat? It's a piece of gum. Mm. Some, uh, some, some, a cola cube. Ooh. Someone runs into the cinema and shouts, fire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Stampede begins. Your parents are looking for their baby. Baby, baby, where's my baby? I've been watching this whole thing unfold. People are running towards you, about to trample on you. I start grabbing them and throwing them out of the way to get them away from you. We do not trample babies when I'm present. That is the one of the biggest rules <laughs> I have. I scoop you up. Someone else, so annoyed that I've been throwing people, grabs me to throw me. Me and you go flying through the air, so far back, towards the projectionist, yeah? We're in the projectionist room. I've got you now. It's confusing. Where are we? The projectionist is nowhere to be seen. I look down into the cinema. No one can get out. Someone has bolted the doors. They've shouted fire, but then locked the doors. Me and you run down to investigate further we get to the doors and who is there but the projectionist right he's playing a prank i box his lights out right i open the doors and people 
grab me. They think I've done it. I said, ah, ba, 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 ba. You do not remember me from the film throwing people about? They were like, yeah, that's why we're going to bat it. I was like, oh. <laughs> 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 but before you do, <laughs> Katrina. Thank you so much, Katrina. And we've got a baby this has been. Oh, all right. Well, <laughs> we'll do more next time. This has been the Potter Vision Podcast. Thank you so, so much for listening or watching. Just to remind you, yeah, as we said, the Liverpool date has fallen through, but we will still be doing Potter Vision in Manchester on, I believe, the 5th of uh, January and we'll be in London on the 7th of January where we'll be doing our new Chamber of Secrets show from the Edinburgh Fringe uh, on the, in the first half and then in the second half we'll be doing a live podcast. Um, so you can get all your tickets, just go on pottervision.com and follow those bloody links that we've handily put up there for you. Also, yeah, if you want to join the Patreon, we're doing some video recorded Christmas messages so you can join us before... Uh, Christmas and we'll get some videos sent to you or to a loved one uh, and we're also having an online Christmas party on the 20th of December where we'll be doing a Potter based quiz and having a good old catch up and a Q&A and a, a good old end of year shindig uh, but yeah otherwise we will just tell you that the next episode will be 130 chapter 33 of book 5 fights and flights you have been a quiz resurrecting Tom Lawrenson. And you have been a cuckoo clock Lucas Kirkby. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Potter Vision podcast. The music was performed by Jack Evans. If you'd like bonus content and to support the show, you can visit patreon.com forward slash Potter Vision.